YouTube buddies. I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome back to another installment in my Celebrating Disney series where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney, animated or live action under the main Disney banner. We got an animated review this week and today I'll be reviewing the 1996 stop motion cult classic from Disney, James and the Giant Peach. So James and the Giant Peach was released in 1996 based on the story from Roald Dahl, a guy best known for writing stories that have been adapted on the film such as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Witches, The BFG, just to name a few. The movie was directed by Henry Selleck, who previously directed the Disney release The Nightmare Before Christmas. Henry Selleck has also directed the amazing film from Leica Animation over in 2009 with Coraline, a fantastic film if you hadn't seen it. And much like The Nightmare Before Christmas, Tim Burton produced James and the Giant Peach as well. So you got some cool aspects to this film. You got Henry Selleck as director, Tim Burton as producer, you got an adaptation of a Roald Dahl story, and his stories tend to be adapted great on film. And it's a stop motion film. I'm a sucker for stop motion. So is this movie any good? Is this a beloved classic? Is this a hidden gem? Or does it deserve to be buried in the water with the giant peach? Well, let's find out together. When the young orphan boy James spills a magic bag of crocodile tongues, he finds himself in possession of a giant peach that flies him away to strange lands. So much like The Nightmare Before Christmas, I never saw James and the Giant Peach as a kid. Which is weird because I really liked stop motion as a kid. I grew up watching a lot of the Rankin Bass Christmas specials as a kid and I loved them. And you'd think I would get into movies like Nightmare Before Christmas and James and the Giant Peach, Corpse Bride, a lot of those stop motion animated films that Tim Burton was involved in. But no, I never saw these movies as a kid. I remembered seeing this film advertised on a lot of the VHS we used to have, but never saw the film. I didn't see James the Giant Peach until a few years ago. And watching it as an adult, the movie just did not really impress me that much. It's cool on a technical level, but the movie never really impressed me that much. So with a fresh rewatch on Celebrating Disney, is my mind going to turn around on James and the Giant Peach? Because there are a dedicated group of fans who love James and the Giant Peach. It is considered a cult classic for many stop motion fans, Disney fans, or Tim Burton fans, or whatever you want to call yourselves. But I'm not too crazy about James and the Giant Peach. And that's kind of sad because Henry Selleck's output as a director is fantastic. I love Nightmare Before Christmas. I love Coraline. Love me some Tim Burton. Roll doll stories tend to adapt so well on film. I love Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I love Fantastic Mr. Fox. But for some reason, this movie never clicked with me the two times I've seen James and the Giant Peach. Not that it's a bad movie. On the contrary, there are some really cool stuff in this film on a technical, visual level. The stop motion animation is really good. I love me some stop motion animation and you can see the imagination put into the film during uh, a lot of the fantastical sequences of the film with the giant peach and the oddball characters and insects that James comes across while he's flying this giant peach. There are some fun sequences in this film. There's a scene with this mechanical shark type thing that resembles more of a submarine with very pointy teeth and a round mouth. I really love the design of that creature and it's easily my favorite scene of the whole movie. There's also a fun little action scene where they have they have to go underwater and I presume Antarctica I think and they have to fight these skeleton pirates. One of them actually resembling Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas. I assume that's his cousin or maybe that is Jack's doppelganger. I don't know. but. That's a fun sequence as well. There's a lot of cool stuff I like in this movie, technically. 
The problem with that is the story did not grab me. The nonsensicalness of the plot just doesn't work for a movie this short. It's only like 80 minutes. It's not even your usual hour and a half runtime. It's shorter than most animated films of this nature. And I feel like there's just not enough material for a story like this to make a compelling movie out of it. You got a rushed backstory of James the Norphin and how his parents died and how he's being abused by his two aunts. And then he gets mysterious caterpillar tongues from a mysterious figure. They turn into a giant peach and then the adventure happens. And even the adventure is just him going across the ocean to New York. And then they just have a lot of filler in there. And just there's just not much in the story that sits with me. I don't think James is that interesting of a protagonist. He's kind of like an inferior version of Cinderella and Harry Potter, just but without any magical qualities to this character. He's just there, and he doesn't really do much for me. The side characters are okay. They're solid voice actors of some of these characters. I do kind of like the Centipede, which I didn't realize this viewing that he was voiced by Richard Dreyfus, which is pretty cool. There's a couple other decent enough characters, like a worm and a spider and a ladybug and all that. And they're just not really that fleshed out and they don't really stand out by the end of the day. They're entertaining enough for the moment, but after watching the movie, I just don't think of them when I think of quality Disney movies, especially in comparison with Disney's other stop-motion film, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Even the extra characters in Nightmare Before Christmas, they're so memorable and they're so zany that they stand out and pop, and that's a fantastic movie. James and the Giant Peach, on the other hand, some of these extra characters that are in there, they just don't really stick out to me. And I just don't find this as investing of an adventure compared to what Henry Selleck and Tim Burton brought us with Nightmare Before Christmas. There's musical numbers in here once again, but instead of recruiting Danny Elfman this time, after the success Pixar have a Toy Story, we got Randy Newman instead. Now I love Randy Newman. He has some great songs and he's had some great success with Disney and Pixar, with no further than all the Toy Story films and the amazing songs they wrote for that film. This film, unfortunately, the songs just did not have that same magic. Like, there's hardly any songs in this movie that are particularly memorable. Even songs that are supposed to develop characters, there's just some, sadly, some weak songwriting. Like, James's opening number, literally the opening line to introduce his character is, My name is James, that's what mother calls me. What? Yeah, the songwriting is just not there compared to other Randy Newman material. I don't know if Randy Newman just did this for a quick paycheck, but these songs just do not stick out to me at all. There's one song that's okay, which is called That's the Life for Me, but it's not like peak quality songwriting or anything. It's just these songs just do not stick out compared to what you expect Randy Newman to provide whether he's scoring the film or writing the songs because all the other movies Randy Newman's been involved with are much better than this and his musicianship is much better than what he's done in James and the Giant Peach so even the music in this film is a bit off another aspect I don't care for in James and the Giant Peach for some reason there's live action segments at the beginning of the film and the end of the film. There's live action segments that introduces James as a character, his orphaned upbringing, and there's live action scenes at the end of the film where the movie resolves its story. And I thought that was a weird choice, honestly. Like, the live action scenes are much uglier visually compared to how colorful and dazzling the stop motion sequences are so they don't balance well in my opinion and it was just a weird choice like I think the film would have been more wacky and fun if like the stuff with the aunts and what some of the abuse and stuff like that I think it would have been a lot more over the top and 
weird if it was claymated. I think there would have been a lot more creative visuals with that. So there were some missed opportunities there, I thought, visually as far as James and the Giant Peach is concerned. Also, like I said, the story's very nonsensical. There's a lot of weird additions that just doesn't make sense. Like, what's with that rhino? Like, literally, what is with that rhino? There's this rhino who shows up who apparently ate James's parents, and James sees this demon rhino haunting his dreams every night. I don't understand what the rhino is all about. It was a weird addition to the movie. I don't know if it was better explained in the book, but I just don't get the rhino. That was just a weird addition to the film. It sounds like I'm bashing James and the Giant Peach because I do have a lot of issues with this film, but it is a very watchable film. I think if you have younger kids and they want a fun, offbeat adventure that's not going to emotionally traumatize them or anything, then James and the Giant Peach is a good safe bet. I think this is a very watchable film. It has some entertaining moments. It's got some excellent stop motion animation in there. That does rival Nightmare Before Christmas as far as, you know, the magic of what stop motion animation can do and the expert care that these visual artists do in creating these lifelike models and dolls that's just so visually striking compared to some of the other animated mediums. There's some great aspects visually in James and the Giant Peach and it's very watchable and it is very it's quickly paced and it doesn't bore me but the problem is that the characters I don't find as memorable the songs are forgettable James is a weak protagonist and there's weird nonsensical story decisions that never really stuck with me that weird thing with the rhino the live action segments at the beginning and end are totally off and it's just a very mismatched movie that doesn't really stick out with me by the end of the day, but if you enjoy James and Giant Peach, if you have that nostalgia and you truly love the film, that's great. I'm glad you love this film. I'm glad you have all the memories of this film. But as someone who never had that nostalgia, never grew up with it, and just see a lot of issues with it, it's not one of my favorites. So I do respect its craft and... It's definitely a solid film, especially for younger kids. It's just not a movie that resonates with me or impacts me in any way either. So, because of that, this movie, James the Giant Peach, I'm gonna give it a three out of five stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 52 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of James and the Giant Peach as part of my Celebrating Disney series where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney regardless of quality, animated or live action under the main Disney banner. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're a hardcore fan of Disney I'll leave a link in the description below for a playlist where you can check out all the other Disney reviews I've done in this series so far, whether it's my animated reviews or my live action reviews. If there's any other videos you'd like to see in this series and you need to catch up, click the link in the description below where you can see more. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it where you can be notified of future videos in this series. Each week on Celebrating Disney, if you're new to this series, I alternate between animated and live action reviews. My animated reviews I'm reviewing in chronological order from their theatrical animated classics, which are direct to video sequels along with Pixar and a few other oddities along the way such as this film and Nightmare Before Christmas, just to name a few. My live action reviews are more freestyle and are prone to request. If there's any Disney film that I haven't covered that you'd like me to tackle in the near future, whether it's a film, a Disney Channel original, or any fran particular franchise don't be shy to leave your requests in the comments down below i definitely appreciate feedback and i'll figure out when to integrate them in future installments in my celebrating disney series join me next week on celebrating disney where i'll be diving into a live action review in the spirit of halloween i'm actually going to be reviewing a disney channel original film next week i haven't reviewed any disney channel originals on celebrating disney so far this will be the first 
and I'll be reviewing a film that's a cult favorite for many Disney fans. I've never seen it before. It's the Disney Channel original Halloween Town. Be on the lookout for that review coming next week. But if you've seen James and the Giant Peach, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!